Let me show you how we can create these moody brown tones in Lightroom. You can give it a try yourself by downloading this raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. The very first thing we need to do is to clean up this image, removing the fence in the foreground. Let's go ahead, open up the remove tool right here. We want to go into the remove mode and we want to make sure to use generative AI. Then we need to zoom in in order to be able to work a little more precisely. I'm going to hold down the space bar and you can see the brush is turning into this magnifying glass. I'm going to click in here once and this will give us way more detail. I'm clicking at the start of this fence once, then I'm holding down the shift key and let's click a little further along this fence right here. You can see this will create a nice straight line. And by holding down the space bar once more, and using our mouse, we can drag the image around. So we can nicely work our way through the image. Once we have made a selection, all you need to do is to click on remove. You might be wondering why I'm not targeting the whole wire all at once. And that's because if we would target everything, Lightroom's remove tool might mess things up. So what I'm doing is I'm going to target everything in front of the background. Now the next step, is to target everything covering its head right here, just like this. And again, I'm clicking on remove. And just like that, I'm working my way through the image. This process is super boring and uninteresting. So I'm going to speed up this part a lot. All right, and there we have it. That's looking much cleaner. Now we can get into the fun stuff. For that, expand the basic panel and right away we are going to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard to lessen the overall contrast. This will kind of help making the whole image brighter, but I want to further push this. So I'm going to bring up the exposure. So this will help bring out more details from the darker parts of the image. It will overall make everything a bit brighter, of course, even the highlights in the sky, which might be a problem because we are starting to lose a little bit of detail in here. I'm not sure if that's a big problem, but I don't want to unnecessarily clip the sky. So I'm going to pull down the highlights just to keep some of those details from those clouds. Then I want to further lessen the contrast. Therefore, I'm going to bring up the blacks. This will not only lessen the contrast, but also help making the darkest parts of the image brighter. And by doing that, we are ending up with a very soft, low contrast base image. The reason for that is because I'm going to use masks to target very specific areas and give those areas each different contrast values later on. So having a flat base image just makes that easier. What I'm going to do next is to adjust the white balance. I do think this shot could be a bit warmer. So let's just bring up the temperature. And I'm going to drop the tint, just introducing more of a green overall tint to the image. All right. For the base image, I also want it to look a bit desaturated. So let's bring down the vibrance and let's bring down the saturation as well. Just a bit like this. All right. Then I'm going to bring up the texture, making the image look sharper. At the same time, I'm using negative clarity and negative dehaze, which adds a very nice soft look over everything, kind of makes it appear to be glowing. So that's about it. Let's take a look at before real quick so we can see the basic raw adjustments looking pretty nice. You can see the contrast is way, way, way less and the colors are kind of desaturated as well. Obviously, now we're going to target very specific areas and that's the most important part of the editing for this shot. You will see why in a minute. So let's go ahead, open up the masking panel. With masking, we want to further separate the subject from the rest of the image. Now the subject on its own is already rather bright. I really love those highlights and I want to work with them. You can see on the left side in the background, we do have a very dark area which we can make darker and thus create more contrast between the bright subject and the dark background, making the subject pop this way. But I also want to add some very heavy bright light effect coming in from the right side. Also, we are going to add some custom vignetting at the bottom, making the whole foreground a lot darker as well. So I would say let's start with the background. And for that, we're going to click on add new background mask right here. 
using these masks it's very important to always show the overlay because Lightroom is also targeting the horn of this cow. So we need a way to get rid of this selection right here. What we could do is to go on subtract and choose select subject. This does not work as I had hoped for, but we can also subtract and choose a select objects mask. Here, make sure to use the rectangle select mode for better results. And then just draw a rectangle around that horn. Still not perfect. Let me subtract with a brush. Again, I can hold on the spacebar to zoom in and I'm just going to brush along this horn. All right, that should be fine. With this mask, I only want to change the background. So that means we also need to get rid of the foreground. I'm going to subtract a linear gradient for that. And I'm just taking out pretty much all of that grass below. And I also want to take out a bit of the left side. So let me use another linear gradient, which I'm subtracting. So just like this. So the reason I do this, I want the right side to be bright and the left side to be dark. So I need to get rid of this part of this mask to not make it brighter. And then all I need to do is to bring up the exposure and you will see how this will nicely brighten up the background in just those areas we want. I'm also going to drop the dehaze, making the background look a little bit softer. And I do think the highlights are suffering a bit, so I'm going to bring them down to prevent heavy clipping in here. All right, that's looking nice. We could also bring down the clarity a notch just to make this part of the background look softer. Then right away, let's make the foreground darker. I'm using a simple linear gradient. I'm going to draw and drag it up like this. And all I need to do in here is to bring down the exposure. I'm going to drop it quite a bit because I want the foreground to be super dark. So something like this, probably. I'm using another linear gradient right away. I'm going to tilt this one a little bit so it's a bit higher on the left side because this area is again where I want the image to look darker. And again, I'm going to drop the exposure. This way, just stacking multiple different masks on top of each other. Let's bring it down like this. All right. Maybe bring down this linear gradient a bit to not affect the subject too much, but I really like this look. Then let us add a little bit of light coming in from the right side. I'm going to use a radial gradient here. Let's make it nice and big like this. Let's tilt it a bit to give this light effect a more natural effect. I'm also placing the center outside of the image again to make it look more natural and we need to subtract the subject because we want this light effect to be behind the subject and then to create light all i need to do is to bring up the blacks and i can even bring down the dehaze to make this effect stronger all right on the other hand we can work on the left side as well so let me use another radial gradient i'm going to drag it up like this make it nice and big again place the center outside of the image and again, I'm subtracting a subject mask right here. And I'm also going to subtract a linear gradient because I don't want to affect the grass in the foreground, just the dark forest in the back. Now, of course, I don't want to add light. I want to make it darker. And to make it darker, again, I'm simply going to bring down the exposure. Now, here you can really nicely see how bringing down the exposure in the background will help separating the subject and just make this cow stand out. That's looking super, super good. You might have already noticed it. Unfortunately, the masking in Lightroom sometimes isn't perfect because right now we do have some crazy line along this edge right here. When I first started working on this image, I used Photoshop's camera raw tool and it seems to work a little bit better because I didn't have any issues with like that. But don't worry, what I'm going to do is to use a radial gradient. And I'm making sure I'm overlapping the problematic area right here. So let's make it big like this. And in here, I'm just going to add a little more light. So let's bring up the blacks. And let's also bring down the dehaze. This will not fix every problem we have with this line, but it will make it less visible. I do want to target the grass behind the subject. So let's work with another radial gradient. I'm going to make this one a little bit thinner. I think like this. 
Let's stretch it a bit. Now, again, I don't want to change the forest. So we need to subtract a linear gradient, getting rid of the forest in the back. And of course, we also need to subtract a subject mask to not affect the cow. Now I'm going to add a light effect by bringing up the exposure. I'm also going to bring up the whites to make it nice and bright. Again, this will help separating the subject from the background since the subject in this area is rather dark and we are now making the background in that area brighter. I also think I want to bring up the temperature, introducing a warmer light and let's play around with the tint. I'm going to bring it down to have some nicer green tones in here. Okay. One more thing we can do, of course, is to work on the subject itself. So let's go create a new mask and choose select subject. What I want to do is to make the subject a little brighter. So let's bring up the exposure just a bit. We really need to be careful here to not overdo it, but I think we can pull up the highlights all the way. I'm also going to bring up the whites, something like this. All right, nice. And I might even want to bring up the temperature to make the fur just a bit more glowing. Let's see, maybe even bring up the tint. This will add some more reds back to the fur. I think that looks great. Okay, and I'm going to push the saturation a bit. Having some more saturation on the subject also helps to separate it from the rest of the image. All right, looking good so far, I am going to use another subject mask this time I'm only targeting the cow's head. So I'm going to click on those three dots, choose intersect mask width, and I'm choosing a radial gradient, which I'm going to draw up around that head like this. And that's the part of the image that is in focus and I want to make this look extra sharp. Therefore, I'm using texture. So let's bring it up and let me use some clarity, which will give this area some really nice highlights. All right, that's looking beautiful. And I think that's it for the masking stuff. Let me turn off all these masks so we can see the difference from before with our base raw file to after. This is looking so, so much better and it was all pretty easily done, I would say. Now we can focus a little on the colors. So let's go ahead, open up the color mixer. I wanna work on the saturation. Basically, I want to desaturate the whole image except for the orange tones. So I'm going to bring up orange, which will affect our subject mostly. Then I'm going to bring down the yellow tones a bit. And I'm going to bring down the green tones and the blue tones. All right. Now, if you want, we can use the color mixer to add more contrast to the image. Therefore, we need to head into the luminance panel. We can make our subject brighter using the orange luminance slider. So we can slightly bring it up, giving the cow some more highlights this way. Be, just be sure to not overdo it. Otherwise, we end up with clipping, which doesn't look good. We can also bring up the yellow luminance for the same effect. Now, if you want to make the orange tones a little more intense for the scene, you can go into the color grading panel for some split toning. We can use the mid tones and let's set up the hue to an orange color tone. Let's go with something like this and here play around with the saturation. I'm going to dial down the saturation because I don't want to overdo it with the orange tones. I think something like this looks pretty good. Then we can go into the calibration tab and just play around with these sliders. Of course, if you have been watching my videos, one thing I always do is to bring down the blue primary hue and bring up the saturation because I love how this looks. For this scene, however, we can also bring up the green primary hue and bring down the red primary hue. Let me turn off the calibration so you can see the difference from before to after. The last thing we need to do, of course, the sharpening in the details panel. So bring down the radius all the way, increase the details all the way up. Then we want to hold down Alt key while adjusting the masking slider. So we can nicely target the subject like this and bring up the amount of sharpening. And that's it. So let me know what you think about these moody brown tones we have just created in Lightroom. If this video was helpful, make sure to like it, maybe leave a comment and maybe even subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and see you all next time.